Hi, everybody. So, I'm on a little late because I was waiting for um, Fairy Vexen to get over her little chat time um, that she does on Wednesday nights because I didn't want to interrupt that. That'd be rude. But I'm very excited, so I couldn't stand not going on. What did I do with my razor blade? Oh, there it is. So I have a huge haul tonight. Um, this is from my friend. Well, um, they're, they've become my friends. Um, they cut out of India. I believe they cut out of Jaipur. And then, oh, look. They sent me a necklace. It's more red than it's showing up on the screen. Um, I wonder if I can link that. Oh, there. It's still more red than that. <clears throat> um, so that's the first gift I got out of my little box. It's still a little. Oh, there. That's better. Hey, Deborah. I'm just showing some cabochons I ordered. Um, they come from India. Well, they're cut in India and Jaipur. And then they have a warehouse in... Um, they have a warehouse in New York. So that's where they... Go. I actually order them from so here's the first one. Oh, look at that that's lapis and it has been it's called rose cut it's faceting so the flat it's bottom oh excuse my nails my granddaughter will be over friday and we'll do our nails again so that one's faceted let's see i will just start a little collection here for you guys to see let me see can i go in one more there we go so that's the first one. It says B700. So I wonder if I paid seven bucks for that. I don't remember. I have my list. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I kind of on a lapis kick lately. Um, I just sold the last two pieces I've made of it. Here's another one. Oh, good. I bought some. There's one. Look at that one. And these are natural. These aren't dyed. And you can see the pyrite in it. Oh, I'll put that one down there. I don't, what do we got here? Oh, there's two in here. Let's see. So I have, I believe this is, I don't have my list with me because it's on my phone and my phone is lighting the room. <laughs> Let's see. I believe this is Hubei turquoise. Hubei is in China. Um, and the mine they just named their mines after the city it's by. Oh, I can't wait to set that one. That one will probably become a ring. This is the perfect size. Um, and um, Hubei runs along the same line. Do you keep track of all your purchases? Yes, I do. Um, so I'll print out an invoice from him. Um, so he gave me a list on my, I ordered through Instagram. Oh, look at this piece. Oh, I don't, I'm guessing that is, I'm going to say it's Peruvian green opal. If I'm wrong, I'll tell you later. Um, so I'll print it out. So I'll print what I paid. And then shipping is $5 a piece or they knock it down um, and they combine it because like I got this huge box. It's about three inches thick and it's, oh, I don't have my thing. Um, it's about six inches long and it's all full of stones. New version. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, um, Cancel, please. Cancel. Thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, there. Um, so then um, I'll print that out and I'll put the date. Um, and then usually how I paid, whether it's cash, credit, or um, um, exchange trade. And... Um, then I keep a notebook. I put all of my paper into a notebook. Um, and then I print off my bank statements too. But I keep the notebooks to um, back it up for the taxes. That's Sharite, so it's purple. I believe it's Russian. There we go, look at that. 
So that's a purple one. Oh, I've got two in here. Oh, here's another who baked turquoise. And I got this one. And these mines, the Hubei mine runs in the same latitude line as uh, Sleeping Beauty and Kingman. So that's why the turquoise looks a lot like Kingman. Look at that. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't know if, oh yeah, you can see. See, that's more like Sleeping Beauty color, that blue. And this one, this must not be Hubei. This must be a different mine. Um, and this one's more green, like um, Kingman. So, yeah, that's why when I was getting it from Barbie, I was all sad because she quit dating her invoices. <laughs> of course, most of the stuff I buy from Barbie is for me or for gifts, but I still keep that track, okay? That's a garnet rose cut. Yippee, I'm so excited. Ooh, Kristen. Perfect. So he's nice. He so he he bags them. He double bags some of them together, and then he rolls them in in this. And then he's great. He does not write what they are, but he does write their numbers. That's on Instagram on my list for me. And that's how I happened to find him. He's under um, gemstone um, underscore. There's another one. Oh, I love that. Underscore um, dealers, or he has two what? He has two handles: gemstone dealers, gemstone underscore dealers, or um, what's the other one? He's at gemstone or cabochon. So you can find him under either of those. And then um, that's how I found him. I have. I have tons and tons of friends and cutters that I've met over the years. Here's another. Oh, that one looks good. It's a little darker. I've got some intense light on it, but that's a beautiful garnet shield cut. He's done a great job cutting these. I need to move my camera more like that because I started the stack up that way. And so that's how I met him. So um, when I found my people on Instagram... I was looking at prices first and then cuts. I really wanted some rose cut, which is the faceting on top. And then I, because I use um, Mr. Jim mountain trails, um, gemstone and jewelry. I use him for, for stuff here. And most of my stuff, this is a Ruby. And that's a piece of Ruby. Um, uh, Zoazite. You can see the green in there. And I've got some Ruby Fuchsite, which will be in a white in a quartz. And so I use Mr. Jim for a lot of my bigger stones, a lot of the lap or a lot of the, um, um, agates and jaspers and all of those things. And then my friend, um, David Garcia, who is known as, um, Lapidary Dave, all over the social media stuff, who, if you don't watch, is a great one to watch. Here's another piece of Charite. It's the purple. Oh, there. It's a great purple. It's not, it's intense, but it has the um, Schiller effect in there. Like a moonstone does. Um, let's see. I think it'll go right next to it. Yeah. Just the edge of it. And so I, so I use these three people and then I have friends that cut and stuff and I'll use them occasionally um, because I'm always looking for an unusual piece or, you know, something special. And then I have a dealer that I get a lot of my tiny accents from that I can pick them up on the cheap. So by tiny accents, I mean like little smalls, oh, like those, those opals, small smalls or... Here's a peridot, tiny, tiny peridots set like that, you know, to accent these bigger pieces. Here we go. This is um, hypercene. See the stripe through it. That's why I got this one. I actually already have, oh, I wonder if I, oh, I bet it's on my phone. Okay. 
So, oh, did I take a picture? I was, what was I doing? Oh, I take my granddaughter um, to her doctor's appointments. Um, she does OT and speech and PT and whatever she's doing. Um, she has lots of doctor's appointments. So grandma takes her to those when mom and dad can't, when they're working or whatever. So once a week or twice a week, I'm doing that. And, oh no, did I not? Oh, maybe I have them in pictures. And so I try and, you know, do stuff when I'm there. Um, because if I go into the therapy session with her, she doesn't tend to pay quite as good attention uh, and do quite as much work as if, as when I um, sit out in the waiting room. So here it is. So let me see if I can, there. So here's the bottom half. Okay, so I made this picture up. Let me, I'm gonna have to widen that. So here is this stone, the hypercene. So it goes right here. So I'll get this, this is a, a mammoth amethyst. And then I'll make a flower and two balls and then two more balls. And then I'll mount a um, amethyst down there. So I have, I, I finally got my pieces for that. And then, yeah, these are the pieces. Oh, the light is killing me here. And then that, oh, I don't have the charite. So I have charite and this is silver obsidian. And I have, and this is what that piece looks like. Oh, yeah. So it'll have the charite on top and then I'll make it um, swing, um, articulated and have the silver sheen obsidian swing from the bottom. And that's the veil for it. So that's what I did during one of her appointments. So I was happy to have there. We'll, we'll close it in that way. That's what I do with my time at her appointments. I actually like having that time because I'm able to use my sketchbook and do that. I used to really like it because I would be out in the car and I would take her and her mom every Friday and I'd have two to three hours. Here's a banded agate with Druzy inside. There's the Druzy. So this one, I will probably um, just cap the ends, maybe this way. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but that's why I got several. I've been collecting those. I'm a Jerusia-holic, but actually, I'm just a Cabochon-holic. But, um, and then on Fridays, I would do story time or haul time in my car out in the hospital parking lot where they had their appointments. There's another, oh gosh beautiful. His gems, they come through every time. So I order from him. I put a huge order in, as you can see, and I order from him about every two months. Woohoo! I've already got my order started for the next one, and I've got more lapis coming, which I may not, well, I always need more lapis, because like I said, I'm on a lapis kit. Okay, here's the, here's this piece, and you'll see this is a more expensive piece than those other two, because Look at the quality. Can you see the quality difference? This piece right here is um, about $20 more expensive than this piece. <laughs> but that's okay. I needed this piece right here to be that expensive. To see how it stands up to the light versus those to go with. Where's the amethyst that I bought to go with it? Oh, here I bought some. I don't make a lot of earrings. So, hi to whoever's watching. I see you lurking. It's all right. You don't have to say hi. I just said hi. I just see you. So, here are a couple hearts that I'm going to make into earrings. Aren't they adorable? Um, There's pyrite in them. I don't know if it's just solid pyrite. I'll have to look. They're so cute. And so how I keep all this, you may wonder. Let's see, do I have one? 
here that's that's not a good one oh here this one's perfect so i have these which are um the size of business cards they're a little thicker than business card or they're thick like business cards so i put the stone on i put what it is this is ohi blue opal this is a pair so i know that this will stay together as a pair um i bought it from a carty jewels on instagram and then there's my code so i know how much i spent and the date i bought it and where i got it so those aren't very close together are they so i will that's how i will store these and then on the back so what i'll do is if i have an idea then i flip it over and i draw out the idea on the back if i already have an idea so the back will draw that out if i don't have an idea then i put it in um you know what you keep baseball cards in or trading cards or you know card cards that kids play or adults play like pokemon cards or stuff then i um put it in those so they're safe and i have three notebooks going i may have to go to four. Oh, look so i bought several of these because I, what i'm hoping to do where is my little so you don't have to look at my ugly fingers i'm hoping to mount a faceted stone in there and then depending on the size of this yeah this one's got a good one i'm hoping i will probably mount a non-faceted stone here and then have or use that with sterling and and make the bale that way so i'm really excited these are fossils and i bought several different ones of these these all look different so i'm excited about those i see one of the stones that i added to my order as a last minute oh here's a big one. Oh. He was so nice. He knew I was digging these. So he always, he figures out what I'm into the time I'm ordering. This is a set or a pair. Look at these. So this is how it was. This is how they found it or he got it. Oh, isn't it? You could see the shell. That's the mother of pearl part. And he cut it, and that's what you get on the inside. I don't know if I'll make them into earrings. I mean, they're gorgeous. They're not actually that heavy. They'd pull, though. I don't know. Or if I'll make two pendants. I don't want to separate them. Aren't they gorgeous, guys? Look at that. Now you see why I'm a... Uh, let me... I guess I'll make it wider. Please ignore my desk. I wasn't going to do that. I didn't think I'd get this today. So, oh, so he knew what I was looking for this time. So he pulled out a lot of the rose cuts for me. And my next order, oh my God. My next order is almost all rose cuts. So check this puppy out. I feel like I should have gloves on like I used to when I worked at the jewelry store. Oh, I don't even have my gym. Oh, this is a travesty to hold this with my hand. Look at that. This is a real gemstone. It's eye clean. Look at that. Look how deep that is. This puppy cost me a fortune. I wasn't going to get it. And then he told me he'd give me a discount if I wanted it because... So this is, I think, I think this is the pendant. Oh no, this one went with this. Although now together, I think it was this way. These may be too big for that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Goodness, please don't drop. I may rethink that. I, that's totally rethought. Look at this puppy. So it is. Dang, I don't have to weigh it on my carrot scale. Hold on. Okay, we're at zero. At its widest, it's 17.6. It may be five. 
by 27 point, oh, 28 by 28. So it's probably 17.5 by 28. And then the depth, oh my Lord above, 15.5 millimeters. Oh my God, guys. I'm so excited. Hi, book bewitched. Yeah, I know. I love that too. Okay. So I don't know if you were watching Deborah, because I know you're on Mr. Jim sometime. I just bought one almost as big as this. That is um, a bicolor. So half of it is, it's an emerald cut though. It's not, this is more of a checkered board cut, specialty cut cushion. Um, oh my gosh. Put you in your in a little gym. That's a travesty of epic proportions. I should have my special stuff out for you. <laughs> um, and he was selling. Well, it was one of his special ones, and I saw it in there. I'm like, how much? And he's like, a lot. I'm like, that's okay. And so it's an emerald cut, and I think he said it was 19 carats. This one's like 27 or 28, I think. Let me see. Um, but I was like, uh, I want it. So I have that coming to me too. Who knows? Maybe I'll put them together and make a hellacious, um, unit. I want, oh, it's on carrots. Shouldn't be on carrots. Hold on. So let me put this on. I'm going to zero that out. And this isn't my delicate carrot skirt. Okay. This rounds up, so it's at 47.5. Holy Christ. So it's probably 47 carats, and I'll double check that with what he did, and I'll weigh it on my precise scale. So, and it, yeah, 47, 47.5, so it's wavering back and forth, and that's with it zeroed out. So, yeah, that puppy's big. The problem is whatever, I mean, people on YouTube and the internet, I'd sleep with that. Um, yeah, people on the internet aren't used to paying prices like that. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'll do one of my private buyers will probably pick that one up for me. But here's an amethyst that is gorgeous, but you can see inclusions in that with your eye, with your naked eye. This is, I can't, I don't. Oh, I do have my loop. I wonder what I did with it. I'm not seeing any. My loop, um, Jim Standard, I don't, it, I don't know why. I you guys probably don't even care. Jim Standard, when you look into a, let's loose. When you look into a gym, oh, put my fingerprints all over it. Okay, there are inclusions. One, two, three, three little dots there. Can I see them with my naked eye though? No, I can't even see it with my naked eye. So my loop though is a, oh, it's all, maybe I can read it under here. Can you guys read that? I think my loops is 60 powered. So under GIA or the International Gym Association, the standard for when you look at diamonds or any other um, gem quality piece and you're grading it is 10 magnification. Now, this, like I said, this is either six, 40 or 60. I'll have to look it up. It's a mess. I can't remember. They've made some, and mine's lit. I have, this one has a black light on it and a regular, just a light. Um, and they've made some new rulings as to that because that's now become a thing. But um, the standard is what you see with your eye and then what you see with the tin. And, and then um, anything you see with more is not, it does not go against the grading scale of a gem. So... I don't think, I think that would be graded as a, an A plus, no inclusion under, under 10 magnification. 
and truly um it may have been i don't think it was on my fingers like i said i should have been handling that my white gloves on Ooh. i'd want it in a ring so you could see it i know and that's what everybody wants the other one in but guys i don't know i can't remember on the most hardness of scale what quartz is i think it's seven and a half but guys, look how deep that is. I mean, look how high I'm going to have to set that off my finger for you guys. <laughs> it's going to be set that high. That's like almost an inch off your finger. I mean, will it be gorgeous? Will it be pretty? Oh, yes. And I've got some awesome... I might even have a couple black diamonds to put around it. <laughs> Here's some more. Oh, there we go. I was in the rose cuts when I ordered this. Here's another one. Like I said, this was a last minute order. He put this up. He doesn't do a lot of these. But I was begging him for some, you know, something special. Hi, Barbara Paul. Did you see my goodie? Well, here's my amber. It's even got awesome inclusions. Look at that. That is a leaf. Oh my God, it might be a bug. Well, I'm going to have to look harder and I'll let y'all know. That may be a caterpillar in there. See its fuzzies. Oop, I dropped it. Anyway, Barbara Paul, look at this. Barbara, you want to be friends? Look at this puppy. 47 carats, approximately. I wear big Hurricane rings. I'm a big girl. Yeah, I am. I'm Well, I'm not a big girl. I'm short. <laughs> but I'm fat. <laughs> so, this ring right here. So, I wear on this finger. That's a 10. So, you can compare. And that's a Lyra coin. A 10 Lyra coin. It's not shiny as pretty as it did when I first got it because it got my fingerprints on it. It's an amethyst. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of them. Did you get your package, Barbara? I didn't check the tracking today. After I'm done opening this, if you're still here, I'll check it for you. So I got that amber that has the inclusion. Oh, here's one I've been waiting for. Oh, there's the other one. I got two of these. I am not into orange either. That's not my colors, but I do live here in the Denver metro area, which is the Broncos. But I am a Bengals fan. And look at that carnelian. As orange as it's showing, that's as orange as it is. Natural. See? No include. That's just a natural inclusion. It's not a crack. No cracky. It's just the natural banding in it. Oh, good. Ooh, um, my sales. Um, Thursdays are usually on my channel in the mornings, um, 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, but this week, my partner, Kim Vizi, is um, having a birthday bash for her birthday. So we're on her channel um, tomorrow. And that's just Kim Vizi. K-I-M-V-E-A-Z-E-Y. And there's already a, a thing for it. And I will put it in the description after this video is over so you can find it. And that'll be on tomorrow morning. And we're having, it's fun and games. And then on Mondays, we do um, 11 a.m. Eastern. And that's when I paint and or make jewelry. And then um, I do my bead sales and my gemstone sales. I was doing them on Tuesday evenings at 11 Eastern, but I'm going to flip that to the mornings. This is, this is bacon. Okay, it's not bacon. It's rhodolite. But somebody called it a piece of bacon one time, and now I can't. I'm not really into it. But this one didn't look so bacony to me, so I did get it. And I like the cut of it a lot. 
So I'm going to have to pull up more. We're getting full, guys. <laughs> Do you see this pair, Barbara? <laughs> Will I marry you? Sure. <laughs> sure, my husband would love to get rid of me on days. And then you cut it open, and that's what you have inside. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. That's my last. Here's another carnelian. I got two of those carnelians because I'll sell one and I'm gonna keep one for myself and put it with some black. This is the one I'm keeping for myself, I think, because I like the shape. Because I'm a Bengals fan, even though they stink most of the time, I still love them. What do we got here? Oh, there's a big piece of turquoise. I don't think it's Corsicola. I think it's actually turquoise. I do not have my list sitting here. I kind of feel bad. If I'm telling you wrong, I apologize. I'm, yeah, this is, I'm pretty sure that's turquoise. Look at that. That's a Turk. It, that's why I bought it because it's awesome. That's natural, too. It's that hard. It looks like the number eight mine, only this is from China. China. That's how they said it in Mulan. The king, what will you do for China? To Mulan. And then I got some white horse jasper, which is from Arizona. It's one of my new favorites. Oh, I got two pieces because... I do need to make some earrings, so that's them. Oh, they're beautiful. I'm going to have a lot of work cut up ahead of me. Ugh. Maybe I'll just sell them. That's the other thing, guys. If you see any stones you want, something made out of, let me know. I do do custom, semi-custom work. This is Lepidolite. It runs from a rosy color to this purpley color. See the little mica specks in it? That's what's making those pinpoints. And when I was a kid, I loved to get mica when we go out rock hunting in Colorado when we come here from Kansas because mica peels in strips. So I had to get that piece just because I like the mica in it. Uh, let's see. I'm almost done, guys. Pretty good haul for... Oh, this is this is oh, it's from the Caribbean. It's Caribbean. It's it's not Caribbean calcite. It's another one, but it's a newer one. And see, you can see the things in it. The like the. Oh, maybe this one is Caribbean calcite. Look at the back. See? And you can see, oh, see the design in it? And you can tell it's not Laramar because if you look, I don't know, I don't have a light with me. But if you look, you can see through it. And Laramar is not translucent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's Caribbean calcite. Caribbean blue calcite, I think is what it's called. Mr. Jim has me hooked on it. And this was the, his, his stuff's better than this. And I have three towers that I've made into pendants that hopefully will be done. The one I'm just not happy with, so I can't sell it, put it up for sale. Oops, that bag was open. Oh, look at that. That is another lapis. That one. Wow. There's not a lot of pyrite in that one. But you'd see the deep veining in that. That's cool. It's a really nice piece. And then I was hoping a couple. This one, I think, is it's. He didn't match them together, but I was hoping. Uh, I think Triple C is the one that bought. Yeah, I can do these as a pair. But they're not. Oh, I couldn't do them. 
Oh, I could make, well, I don't know. But she wanted some, look at those. Those are gorgeous. That's like AAA quality. Um, she bought, I think she bought a bracelet and a um, necklace for me. That's, and, uh, she bought a big um, round piece that was um, faceted and lapis. And she wanted some earrings sometime. Here is the silver obsidian. Look at that, guys. Woohoo! The Aztecs used to, well, the Incas, the Mayas, and the Aztecs all used to cut obsidian and use it as a weapon because obsidian is um, glass, volcanic glass. So it is a sharp, it is sharp as a scalpel when it is made into um a point. I would love to have a few um, obsidian. Oh, you can't see it down there. Okay, where are we going to put you, Mr. Obsidian? Um, a few obsidian um, arrowheads or spear tips. Here's the little one that goes with that other little one. These two. See, aren't they cuties? They don't quite match, but you're never going to get a perfect match. I like this one better. This was my favorite because it had, I like, it just, I like those colors better. But I wanted several. I like to have several so that my clients can have, oh, we're, we're just running out of room. We're going to have to make it bigger. You're going to have to ignore my mess. Sorry, guys. Um, I like to give my clients as much choice as possible when they're thumbing through my books. Or when they ask for a certain type of stone. Oh, I'm always on a heart kick because I love hearts. Look at that. This is not a gemstone, even though it's under the gemstone classification. This is glass. This is called goldstone. This is blue goldstone. <laughs> it was discovered by accident the original color gold, and then they now make it in blue. They also make it in red, purple, green, blue, and, and the original gold. Now, I've never seen the red, so I've been told they make that. I've seen the purple once, and I've seen the green in beads. And I've seen the blue in beads lots of times, and, of course, the gold, gold stone. Don't, and I used to refuse to even carry it because it's glass. But when you have a bead store, which I had for a couple years, you do have to start, you know, carrying things that people like that you don't. And I, oh, I've come to realize that it does have its place in history and it does have its own type of beauty. This is, so guess what this is, guys? Okay, I want you to look at it and look at its properties. We see that it's red, right? Do you see the orange flash in there? Yep. So now we think, what is red? Well, we have rubies or tourmaline can be a really deep pink, or we can have pink tourmal or pink um, topaz, or we can, which is usually, it's very rare and it's usually lighter than this hot pink, or we can have red spinel or pink spinel. Or we can have rubies. Now, this is going to be a corundum, which is what sapphire and ruby are. How do we know when to diagnose something as a sapphire versus a ruby? Someone asked me that. Well, used to be that rubies came from Burma and they glowed and under, or they fluoresced under purple light. So we knew that they were rubies because sapphires didn't. At least that type of corundum didn't. But also, look at that. You see that orange flash in there? A ruby's going to have that orange flash. Or, I mean, a ruby's not going to have that orange flash. But a pink sapphire like this one will. Because orange sapphire is normal is a normal color. So that's a good giveaway that this is a pink sapphire. And I had one. I had its brother or sister. And I have it in a finished piece already. So I wanted another one because... I loved it. 
and I'm going to have to sell it. It's also, it's actually more purple than it is pink. And Ruby is supposed to be a red. This is an emerald. This is the emerald. Yep, this is the emerald. Um, I can't remember if this was the Colombian. He had one Colombian and one other one. So, and truly, if somebody called that a Ruby, I'm, you know, unless they were buying it, I wouldn't explain it to him because corundum's corundum is corundum, you know. But one of the great secrets of your is that most uh, once I started testing things, you know, in the 1930s, 1940s, 50s onward, even the early 1900s, um, they realized that in the um, crown jewels across the world, but even in the um, in England in the crown jewels and the British crown jewels, um, most of the rubies, emeralds, and sapphires you see are actually spinel, because. <laughs> Spinel is much more plentiful, especially in those rich, dark blues and dark, rich blood reds. So, and spinel is very, spinel can be a very expensive stone too, but on its own. But it was a little let down and the, the crown didn't want us commoners to know that for a while. Um, this is not an emerald. This is onyx. And you can tell, ooh, hoo, hoo. you can tell many ways. One, onyx aren't this color. Two, the flash is not there, even with the cut. Three, jardine, which is what you look for in an on in an emerald, is the garden. La, la jardine, which is what you look for. I'm not French. I know I didn't say that right. But that's what you look for. And it is... Um, um, what's inside the emerald and Colombian emeralds have the best. Even the clear ones have, you still have to have a garden in them or else that's one hint that they're man-made. This, I don't know if I can get you to see it. Oh yeah, there you can. This is gold rutile quartz. You can have rutilated quartz that is not gold. I know everyone says you can't, but you can. If it's black, it is termalated because black is termalated. But there are other colors that can be rutiled, including there's an awesome one that's red. Sometimes it can even be pink. So that's some of the stuff I learned when I was at the GIA. And there are lots of people on YouTube and others that will argue with you that you can't do this or you can't have that. And I don't argue with them. I just agree and let them go on their merry way because... I've taken the tests. I've gone through the classes. I'm not going to argue with them. I don't buy a lot of rounds, but I did buy a few. This one, look, the back is not finished. The front is. So that's a way you can tell a cutter. Usually he finishes his backs. That's interesting to me. You can see where he had it on a stick. I can't remember what they call it to hold it, to polish it. So he didn't finish that back, but... This one's almost finished. It's not as high polished, but it's pretty close. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. This one's pretty close. He even cut an edge around that one. That was nice. He usually does finish pretty good. I wonder why he didn't. That one is too. That's just not got a high polish on it. That's awesome. So I don't know. That's unusual for him. He may not have done it because look how thin this piece is. It is wafer thin. If you've seen Monty Python, you get that reference. So that may be why it is. Because um, like I said, that's the first piece I think I've ever got from him that's like that. Yeah, they're all semi-polished. And then this piece, I believe, is actually a man-made piece. I don't know much about it. I just loved it. And looking at it, I think it's sandstone, which is fine. But I loved that and you can feel it in it so what they probably did was and this may not be man-made this may have come from a huge rock and they just cut because he had like like 15 different pieces and this was the one i picked and then he polished it off because that is sandstone 
which in Kansas, there's lots of that limestone, sandstone. They're two different things, but they're fairly close. Um, and it has a code, it has a top, top coat. You can't, you can't fake. So I'll ask him about it, but I'm pretty sure he said it was the natural fossil. But like I said, he finishes his backs, <laughs> but I got that and I'll probably just, um, I'll just probably put a bail on that and call it done. I just got that because I thought it was fun. May not ever even set it. So we'll put it in here. So that's what I got from my friend. I'm thrilled to find you. I just bought a gigantic Merlin worthy sterling ring from a reseller with glass stone. Oh yeah. Usually I can replace the stones. It depends on, um, the setting. Um, sometimes to take it out would cause more damage than to just make you a new one. Other times you can get them out fairly easy. I have a couple, I have a couple that I'm working on for people right now that were easy to pop out. This piece I popped out, I haven't finished it yet, but that had a stone in it that was glass. I was able to soak it. I was able to soak it and in acetone, the glass just pitted and the glue came off and it popped right out. Um, there was a little pitting on the um, sterling. Um, I, I uh, polished it and then I ran it through my, um, whew, that one's still bent. I ran it through my tumbler I taped them because these get bent, but there's a couple ones that are still bent and it turned out pretty good. I just have to find a stone the right size, which is often lots of pretties, Cody. Aren't they all? Look, I got a piece of amber and I think it has a, has a little piece of, of a buggy in it. And then the favorite of the night, my 47 carat amethyst. I don't know how the heck I'm going to set it, but I will. <laughs> and then these are all rose cut. Oh, I have to show you this. This is my, this is probably my favorite of it just because of how funny it is. So here's a, here's the little snail. He was snailing along and then he died. And years later, they cut him in half, and now he's pretty inside. <laughs> it's supposed to be earrings, but they're kind of going to pull. I just, I don't know, look at that. You could see some of the opalization. But damn, aren't those pretty, Cody? <laughs> so, got those. I got some Hubei turquoise that's turned out gorgeous just got a couple pieces because i get my turquoise from um my friend david aka lapidary dave you should go join his channel he's awesome and um so that's where i get most of my turquoise and verisite and those and a lot of other things and then mr jim is the other one but Mr. Jim doesn't always have rose cuts, so I get a lot of my rose cuts. I'm not going to be able to keep that. That kind of grosses me out. <laughs> That's a pink sapphire. I have one that I've just finished. That's an emerald. That's um, onyx. You got a little rutilated quartz, gold rutilated quartz. An ammonite. Okay, yes. Oh, the orange... Yeah, this is carnelian. This is some of the brightest carnelian I've ever seen. I saw it on his page. I was like, oh my God. For us Bengals fans, this is like perfect. So I'm keeping this piece. I think. I don't know. It depends. And this is Ruby Zoazite, but it doesn't have really much Zoazite in it. There we go. Okay. 
focus in once in a while. There's only a little bit of zoazite in that one. Actually, aren't they called ammolites? And because they're not the fossilized stone, which is ammonite. I don't know. One of them, the other. Clemson tigers. Bleh. No. I'm a big eight. Well, the big 12, the big 10, whatever the hell they're called now. I'm a K-State Wildcat. There's no Clemson Tigers in this area. <laughs> Actually, I was hoping that the orange would sell. Oh, yeah. They're complementary colors on the color wheel. I can turn into my... Um, I can turn into the uh, art teacher I used to be. <laughs> Tiger territory. Yeah, well, the Broncos are here, so... Everyone loves blue and I was kind of thinking of doing something horrible like blue and that actually, I don't know. I don't know. I'll probably do a design session maybe Saturday afternoon. What time are you thinking on Saturday? I don't want to go in. I don't want to take. You do something in the morning and the afternoon, don't you, Cody, on Saturday? Maybe I'll do it Sunday morning. I don't know. I just try not to do it when other people are doing things. But I'm going to spend about an hour, and I'm going to take five or six stones. 4 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, I'm going to spend an hour or two, and I'm going to design with them. And I'll show you exactly my process and what I'm going to make with the four or five of them. That I've already, I already know what I'm making. Yep, 9.30 Eastern chat. So how long does the 9.30 thing go? Do you, is that the one that goes to like 2 o'clock? <laughs> and if you guys haven't gone, her chats are funny. You never know what they're going to talk about. I mean, dogs, scavengers, like people scavengers, not like animal scavengers. <laughs> You want an amethyst ring? Did you see the amethyst I got on Saturday night from Mr. Jim? It's half and half. <laughs> I have some other amethysts too, Barbara Paul. This is this amethyst is like not a cheapy peepee. -pee. <laughs> that amethyst, whatever I make out of it, starting several hundred dollars. It used to. Now what to sell it for? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm trying not to like hurt, step on other people's toes. That already are established. Like I don't. Whatever. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. Or make them think that I'm not. You know. Giving them their dues. <laughs> oh you missed it. So it is a bicolored amethyst. And it is not citrine and amethyst. It is. Crystal quartz. Clear. Like ice clear. With dark dark amethyst. I rarely see those. Of course, I think I spent like $70 on it. But, and I think he said it was like 17 or 20 carats. It's emerald cut. So it's not quite as big as this one. But it's close. So now I have two huge ones. Amethyst isn't even one of my favorite little stones. To tell you the truth, guys, my mom was a K-State Wildcat, purple and white. My high school was the chargers peak west chargers we were purple and white then i ended up not going to art school like parsons art school or bowdered design school i ended up going to k-state probably because i was pregnant you know who knows so purple and white so purple and white isn't really you know purple's not really one of my favorite colors yet here it is <laughs> do you see all the purple i have out here <laughs> Um, yeah, I know I have that. I just had it going so that people would, if they wanted to fill out the thingy, um, to buy stuff at another time, they could my, my, um, form. It just runs. I don't care. Cody, you think I care? Purple is your favorite color. I know it is Cody. And 
it's a lot of people's co favorite color. And I mean, it's a great favorite color. Mine personally is like, you know, a great apple, lime, citrusy green, a la, you know, my pen. And a bright, beautiful pink, a la my pencil. There you go. That's my colors. But whatever. Oh, there's a form way at the top. I did not pin it. I pinned it in StreamYard, not in uh, <laughs> YouTube, because people started coming on, and so I started talking. I really didn't think anybody show up, Cody, <laughs> and I just, last time I did this, I recorded it, and it, um, it corrupted, and I couldn't get it to YouTube, so I just did it live so that it's there and people can see it. And so that my guy that I buy my stones from is happy. And so I can continue getting free things. Last time he sent me a bunch of free stones. This time he sent me some beads. Some mother of pearl beads. Nothing fantastic, but I will take them apart and use them. They're not orange, they're red. Light screwing up the color. But... I'll take them apart and use them in something. <laughs> Book is easier. My 25 year old son, who's getting ready to graduate in three weeks from college, he heard somebody call me D and D and he was like, Oh my God, mom, you finally got a cool nickname. <laughs> I was like, thanks, honey. Thanks. I'm finally cool to my 27 year old. <laughs> so I said I was going to show you. I need, hold on, let me take a picture of this because I need a picture of cabochons. Oh, not with my shadow though. Me and my shadow there. Okay, now I can put that back. Oh, it turned off my light. I'm so ghetto. <laughs> Come on. I bought lights for my desk, but that would require a, like, you know, clean up and stuff. So I was sh showing people how I keep them. This is my three ring binder. And there we go. Of course, none of them are at the top. So these are like playing cards or trading cards of, of, of whatever assortment. And I put all of them in here and labeled. And oh yeah, I heard just today that there's a run on um, imitation um, malachite. So just so you guys know that, and there's some tips and tricks you can use to tell if your malachite is real or not. One, the fake malachite will just have like this. Well, none of these really. Well, maybe this one right here. See how it just has lines? But they're not even just straight lines. None of those are really like it. But it will just have lines. Malachite is actually has iron in it, so it's quite heavy. So that's another thing. And most malachite has funky things in it. Swirlies or look, here's another one that has a little weirdness in it. So even, even these teeny tiny ones that I have up here, see those teeny tiny ones, you can tell they're real malachite, but I just wanted you guys to know because lots of times, especially on the internet, it's buyer beware. So you want to make sure you know, you're getting real stuff. Also, I've had questions about um, lapis. So this is like real lapis. This is actually denim lapis from Afghanistan. My, um, one of the guys here in the metro area that I used to buy from when I had my store, his dad and grandpa actually go into Afghanistan, into the mines, buy the huge rocks 
that have the lapis in them, take them back across to Pakistan. And this guy and his brother then cut the stones or cut them down and then bring them back to the United States and process them and sell them to us. So this, this is just when they started selling what is called denim lapis. That just means that the cheaper lapis that's not as pretty like this. Well, some people think it's not as pretty versus this. These are both lapis and they're both natural. I didn't, neither one of these is dyed. This is just a higher quality. Sorry, my allergy pills wearing off. <laughs> um, where's my little pokey? You don't want to look at my dirty, gross hands. Um, you can see the pyrite, which is fool's gold. So it's going to be the gold in both of them. Yes, lapis can have calcite deposits. See the white? There's even white in this one. You can occasionally see it if you look really hard in here. So that's how you can tell. Here's another lapis that's dark. See, this is dark. They can. This one right here can be called denim lapis too sometimes. I would just call it lapis. I would just call that normal. That's probably a B or a C grade. This is closer to an A grade. These are like, we're talking, we're talking like A plus grade here. So that's how you know that. As I wore you all to death, I'm sorry. <laughs> you like it with the pyrite? Some people like it with the pyrite inclusions. When I first started, I wasn't a big lapis fan. Blue's not really one of my colors that I liked. Um, probably because I had to wear bright blue all the time when I was younger. Um, and here's soda light. Soda light. So now you see soda light has the blue colors like lapis and it has the calcite. This is actually a really high quality. I should have pulled out a crappier one. There's a crappier one. It's lighter blue like denim lapis with the calcite. I actually like this soda light better. This, this should be called something else, but <laughs> I don't know what they should call it, but it also has orange in it. And the orange soda light is actually becoming very popular. And they've found some uh, mines that are just producing very orange soda light with little streaks of blue in it. So it's kind of cool. So watch for that in your local rock store. A lot of that stuff you see in beads because it's bead quality. So here. this is turquoise. People always ask, that's turquoise? That's natural, not dyed. That's Chinese turquoise. This oval turquoise is very old. That is Sleeping Beauty. That's not even their best quality because it's a little greener. It looks perfect on my screen, but it's greener in public. It's a person and it's not blue. Let me see. Let me see. Do I have any other types of... Oh, here. Here's a bunch of turquoises. These are all from Colorado. None of these have been stabilized. This one, well, technically has been stabilized because it's on a backing, but none of them have been resified. So what they do is they'll soak it in resin and then they'll let it dry. Oh, and then um, the resin sinks in the pores. And what that does is keep it from letting your oils co come in and change it because this one right here, this one right here, which is, it looks lavender, which there is a new mine called lavender, the lavender turquoise mine. This one is light washed out icky blue. It used to be this blue, but it's fading over time. And I've had this one on this card since at least 2004 when I had my store. And that was mined here in Colorado. I have a bracelet that I keep. Oh, I don't. I bet I don't have it sitting here now. And I was going to take it apart because the turquoise. Oh, my God, guys. It's just so sad. 
it, it it's really high quality turquoise but it's disgusting it all all the colors gone it's not disgusting but it's sad it made me sad spent a lot of money on that turquoise all the color is bleached out of the one and it's and people are like what happened i'm like that's what life that's what life will do to you Oh, I thought I had it to show you. I'll have to show it some other time. Darn. But yeah, I was going to take it apart. And then I decided, you know what? I'm going to leave it because I can show people what happens and why you want. Oh, is that it? No. Nope. You just see my mess. Why you want to stabilize your turquoise. Lavender mine makes it sound like there's perkable turquoise. Um, it does have a very lavender hue. I don't think I have it in here. Let me look. So here's the last order between Mr. Jim and my friend. So I got, this is called solar quartz. It's dyed. But my, my nine-year-old granddaughter, um, if you ask her what her favorite color is, she says rainbow. So grandma bought her, grandma loves hearts, but grandma bought her some. Here's some druzy. It's tight. It's called titanium druzy. And they put it in this huge like vacuum machine and then they pump in titanium gas. And depending on the gas and the pressure, the different color crystals come out. Here's the labradorite. Okay, I hate, I'm not a labradorite fan, but this one, look at that. See that flash running up and down? Yep, that's going to make a pretty, pretty ring or something. Here is chrome chalcedony. So that has some chromium in it. It's probably mined in Russia close to the chromium diopside mine. You know, that one you won't give a shit about, that one. You probably haven't seen African veridite much. That one I got from Mr. Jim. I got a tanzanite from Mr. Jim. Isn't that pretty? Ooh, ooh. It's not really that pretty, but, you know, it will look pretty with the lavender, maybe. That's, that's amethyst. Let's see. That's Peter Sight. Look at that. Is that not one of the most gorgeous stones you've ever seen? Say yes, because it is. Look at those. Those are... Those are rose quartzes. Those are the ones I got last time that I think I'm going to put with some of those. I love. Oh, here, Cody. Can you see all the pyrite? Oh, you can't. There, maybe that. Very cool rainbow heart. Yeah. Yeah, Peter side is like the uberest cool stone. I wish I could show you this stone. This stone is, I can't pronounce it. It's hypersthene or something like that with a silver streak in it. It just doesn't show on camera. But see those streaks? They're actually true streaks of like silver that have dripped through the stone. It's kind of a cool thing. This opal is one of my faves. My birthday is in October. I really, I don't like opal, but you know. Can't all have things we like. I like this kind of opal. Here. This I got from Mr. Jim. Mountain Trails and Gemstones on YouTube and Instagram. You must look him up. He has sales weekly on Saturday evenings. They're awesome. He sells towers and spheres and sterling silver and costume and gems and cabochons and... The things you make cabochons out of, you know, like this specimen things. I don't remember what they're called, but those things. This is a stalactite or a stalagmite that's been cut and cabbed. Is that not the coolest thing ever? Like I have a couple of them. This larva kite's cool too. Look at that. Okay, I have all this stuff because, you know, I was going to make something. You notice nothing's been made. Nothing. Here's, here's a really pretty. Look at that. 
See, I have nobody to talk to about this. Quarantine ruined my life. <laughs> Mr. Jim rocks literally and figuratively. Yes, he does. He does. Well, Cody, I do have one extra gemstone. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I do sell these too. If you guys see one you like. Did you see this one, Cody? This is turquoise. Look at that. Ooh. Looks like number eight. So number eight is spider webbed. This is from China. And if you look on the map and you look if it was flat, if the world was flat, number eight would be here. And if you wrapped around, China is right here, right here under it. And that's the same latitudinal, no, latitudinal line. Yep, latitudinal. Pretty turquoise, yeah. So right now, all I want is turquoise. Too expensive to buy. So I've been buying piece by piece, but I'm totally into lapis right now and garnets and maybe a little bit. I've got too much purple in my life and maybe a little bit of pink. Sapphire. I do have, I wonder what I did with it. So I had like all my projects laid out right here. Oh, here. So here's the, my bumblebee project that I, I just finished. So I got the bezel, the bezels done. Here's the stone. I measured and um, cut the bezel and then I soldered it. There you go. You can see the solder. So it fits perfect. Actually, it's too big. I think I usually make my, my bezels really, really tight. And then here's the design. I'm this one's going to be so simple. I'm going to use twisted wire. So it'll have I back mine totally. I don't cut out my backs. Um do I have something on that has a cutout back? No, I don't have. Um, so when you look at the back side of my things, you'll see a full plate of sterling. Oh, here. This has a cutout. I don't do that. I do the Native American way. And the back is solid. So you can't see the stone. Stones don't need to breathe. They don't need to have that cut out. Especially cabochons like this. So the back will be totally that. I've started putting a design on the back of mine. So um, since this is called Bumblebee Jasper, I have ordered a bumblebee stamp. And I'll probably put bumblebees on the back of it. Ha ha ha. Um, and it'll just have my fleur de -lis with the bumblebees because the fleur de -lis and my initials are what I put. I put the K backwards. So it's a backwards K and an H. And then the, the fleur de -lis. Sometimes you get both. Sometimes you get one. And then I either put 925 or I have the word sterling printed out. So and then I'll have twisted wire and I'll have it come up and I'll go around. And then I'll have balls at the end of it. And that will the chain or whatever I put through it will, I'll probably have some onyx beads on it, honestly. Um, and so that's, that's the next one that's got to get finished tomorrow, but I have an auction in the morning. Like I told you my Kim, my part, my auction partner's birthday. So I have to do that before I can, um, do anything. What is this? So, I don't know. I think this is, I don't know what this is. It's like, you can't really see it, but the inside is like crystallized green and then it's got black spots. Not sure what this is. I'll have to look it up. Then I have, oh yeah, I love working with coins. So I have my buffalo, I'm, I love bison. So my copper, and I like working with copper. So I have my copper coin, and I bought him. Where's my, do I have my triangle? I'm going to put, I don't know if it's going to go on this one or not. Oh, yeah, I think it will. I'm going to put that on there, and then that looks retarded. Oh, I mean, that looks stupid. Um, I also have a sterling silver, an ounce, troy ounce, or that. You can't see the bison because I have already started soldering. Sorry. It also has the chief on the back. 
And so um, this will be two-sided and you can wear it either way. This one, this one's upside down if you flip it over. Stupid. So um, you can't wear it backwards, but this one you can. And I'll put this on turquoise and I'll have turquoise with it. I just haven't found the right piece of turquoise for that. I don't know if I'll put turquoise with him or not. But I have him. And... Oh, yeah. So, somebody was selling... So, I reclaim a lot of my stuff. Because, you know, when you're pregnant at 18, right out of college, right out of high school, and you're going to college, you don't have money. So, I reclaim... Um, jewelry. So someone sold this because she swore to God it was halite because it's how it looks like halite. It's turquoise. I took off the back. Um, it was, I don't have the actual thing. It was in sterling silver. So I'm melting down the sterling silver. I'll reuse it. It had glue all over it. Grossness. I left that on to show her cause I'm going to show her a teacher. And then I rubbed it off to show her that there's no dye on there. It's not dyed. I drilled down into it there while well, I sanded. You can put your fingernail down. There's no dye. It's true turquoise. And there's a chip on it somewhere else that shows. And it is so cool. It is spider webbed. I don't think it's number eight. I can't remember what it's. It's either Royston or there's another one that's spider webbed. It's a little greener than it is on that screen. Like, well, it's a lot greener than it is on that screen. I don't know if I can get it to show. Sometimes if I hold my hand just right. But anyway, so I bought it for next to nothing. And I got like 20 ounces, 20 grams of sterling plus this stone for like $22. Which, which is fine with me. But I'm, I will actually show her. So that she can learn. Because obviously I like that. I put KC on mine for Kodiak Creations. I need a teeny bear stamp. You know what? I just ordered some stamps because they were like 88 cents on clearance. And I ordered doubles of all of them. And there may have been a bear in that. If there was a bear in that, I'll send it to you. Oh, no. I know. Well, I'm using... I wish that color, see, because that color is correct right there. And this color is too blue, just like that one's too blue. But that color is perfect. That's stupid. And this color, what's this showing up? Nope, that's wrong. Isn't that funny? What's this showing up as? That's wrong too. It's weird. But, um, and like I bought this. This ring is... Well, it's marked 925 because in India they mark um, silver plated as 925. But look at that piece of unikite. That piece of unikite would cost me 15 to $20. Even though it's not that thick. I mean, you know, because there's a, it, there's a, quite a gap there. But that's a good piece of unikite. It's not as orange as it looks in there. It's actually pink. Ballet pink, ballet slipper pink. So I'll take it apart and um, I'll have that. I think I paid $8 for this. So I'll have the Unikite. So that's what I, I do that. That's how I found, that's how I make a lot of my stuff. All the balls I make, I use um, old earring backs or single earrings that I've lost. The other one too. Um, I used to have friends that would save them for me if they lost them. Because they loved me. Here's a Labradorite earring I made. I have two of them. <laughs> Imagine that. They're earrings. I have two. So I have those to sell. Uh... Here's my tooth that's actually not a tooth. See? It's petrified wood from Mr. Jim. 
Petrified wood has fascinated me since I was a little kid. Oh, you know what might be cool? Oh, can't do that though. Where's that other one? My daughter tells me I'm too matchy matchy with my colors. I'm not putting that with that. Damn it, where'd it go? I don't know. There's I have another one, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna put a thing around there and then um make it articulate. There's one I got from him last time. I'm gonna put a band around the middle. That one will be cool. So oh and look at this jasper I got. Is that this is just one of the, it's like flower jasper is what the guy called it. It was hand cut in India and he had old stock of it. So it's like from the early 2000s, like when I had my um, store and I bought, he only had one strand left. I bought it. I made earrings and all the earrings, but these that I haven't made into it have sold. <laughs> Medical contact. COVID. Um, yeah. COVID has killed all my, yeah. Well, and we moved right before then. So we moved five years ago, five and a half years ago. And we moved up into nowhere land. Like all my friends live, you know, like 10 miles away. You wouldn't think it was very far, but they think we like live in BFE. So yeah, I have no friends. <laughs> And I'm not, like, one of those people who, like, go out and make more friends, new friends very well. So, yeah. And my husband did medical retirement, too. So, yeah, neither one of us work. When, when, he, when we moved up here, he said I could retire after 25 years of the therapist. I did art therapy. Well, I taught for two years at a Chinese school. Art, I love, I actually enjoyed doing it, much to my chagrin. My mom was a teacher, and I swore on my last breath that I would never teach, and I did. I liked it. I actually had fun. And now I don't want to go anywhere, because my granddaughter's medically compromised, and... I choose to see her all the time. So she lived with us the first almost five years of her life. So I miss her dearly. I wish she lived with us again without her mom and her, her, her dad. <laughs> but that won't happen. So she has learned. She's my little bench assistant. So she learned to use my Dremel. Oh my God. Okay. I tried that. I quit. <laughs> I had started my first job out of college was working for the um, McCarthy grant, which was for a homeless and at risk homeless mentally ill. And then um, they had an opening in the child protective services. And I thought, Oh my God, I'll move to that. That's I can do good there. Yeah. Yeah. After I was told to return a three and a half year old to his mother, who was a coke head or whatever she was addicted to. I don't know at this point, but um, she could not put her lighter up so that he wouldn't light things on fire. So that she would have to beat him or he would end up in the burn ward that I decided that I could no longer work <laughs> for them. So I ended up then going into art therapy and working in geriatrics and psych units and stuff. Not what I was trying to do, but, you know, I ended up loving it. And I opened up a geriatric psych unit and I opened up an Alzheimer's unit and I started many um, Alzheimer's wings and stuff like that rehab units so yeah 31 years i only made it 25 and i took a break for two years and well i worked a year 
and ran a store and then I took a and then I had a year off two years off where I ran just my store Ugh. yeah no that wasn't that's <laughs> no. 25 was enough every once in a while I think about it I think I might volunteer sometimes they're suckage yeah but you know what? The social workers in our area are getting paid what they were getting paid five, six years ago when I quit. And I'm sorry, I have a master's degree. I have two master's degrees. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to work for 25 bucks an hour. Nope. Not going to do it. It's not worth it to me. Not when my son, who doesn't even have a degree, is working as an intern for 22 not no not gonna do it and i got paid more i got paid 25 bucks an hour or 30 to be a teacher at a private school and i only did that part-time and that was fun <laughs> art therapy is fun too though i enjoy that and i enjoy my old people i do i miss them and i do do some art therapy with like Harley's kids and stuff with some of the special needs kids. I was trained to work with autistic people and mentally retarded people, but that's not where I ended up. So yes, the stories we could tell miss book. <laughs> so, my rocks keep me company. I have a dachshund and a German shepherd Husky mix. Who's in here right now? My dachshund's in his kennel. The last one wasn't too bad. She tried. That's good, Cody. I did always try. And I think most of my clients liked me. Except for the one lady I had to win over. I mean, like, it took me three months to get in her house because I wasn't black. I was the only white girl working at um, an all black um, home health agency. It was a trip. Made lots of friends. And then a new owner came in and she was from Ethiopia. She had immigrated here several years earlier. But man, I learned so much. And the Ethiopian food, so good. <laughs> and I would have never tried it otherwise. So I was thrilled. I learned a lot. And they were funny because they... Like every day they would be like, how do you do it? And I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, how do you get up girl and wash your hair? Cause I have really thick hair and I had really long hair then. And I would curl it and hot roll it and then, you know, do all the get dressed. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I just got up and put my hair up and came to work. You know, and they're like white people wash their hair every day. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, we don't. So it was funny to hear the stereotypes that they had learned of things. So I, I did enjoy that. That that always, you know, cracked me up. The things that they thought us white people did. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. I watched others lie on the stand. But I never got put on the stand because I always told the truth and I'd tell the lawyers that out in the hallway and they'd send me home. Yeah, I wasn't the favorite of most of the courthouse people. So I understand that, yeah. No, I was a huge advocate. The nurses hated me at one of the rehab centers because I made them let one of the two of the patients have sex together because they were both of sound mind and body. And if they wanted to have sex, they can, that's a patient, right? <laughs> so, Oh boy, that one didn't go well. Yeah. That's when I had to join the ethics board for the County, you know, and that has all of the doctor's offices and hospitals and home nursing homes, all that kind of crap, all the medical stuff. And then then I had to do all the education and stuff for him. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I was a huge, yeah. I'm not the one you want to argue about any 
um, any rights like that because my my clients, my peeps, <laughs> are going to win those. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, you just, yeah. I had a reputation, so... Oh, yeah, well, it's not our job to, yeah, I know. I'm sure that did cause problems for you, Cody. I can understand that. At least you weren't here in the Bible Belt. Well, Colorado's not the Bible Belt, but Kansas was part of it. So you weren't part of that, but it wouldn't have gone well there. Either, oh, here's what I've started. That's um, onyx and rose quartz. That'll be a necklace. Yeah, things like that happen. I always got stuck on those cases because those aren't the things that come into question when you're talking about abilities to take care of a child or themselves. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, it can be. But I think that's been shown again and again and throughout um, American history. <laughs> How stupid people can be. So. <sighs> well, that's like my third yawn. So I guess that means I need to clean. Well, I okay. I say I'm going to clean up. This bus will be here tomorrow when I get up to come into auction. But if you want to join us, we're going to have fun. But I'll also have some stuff for sale tomorrow. Um, and we'll be on at 11 a.m. Eastern on Kim Veazey's channel. Not mine this week. And um, if you saw any rocks you liked and that you're interested in having a piece of jewelry made from, you can always contact me at designsandduovers at gmail.com. Otherwise, I'd love to have you um, like and subscribe if you so choose. I'm almost at 300. Woo -woo! And um, that will be cool. I know it's 300, but to me, that's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Ho Veazey V-E-A-Z-E-Y K-I-M She's my auction partner Because I can't really do an auction Very well by myself I try but you know I'm a little flaky sometimes I got the little Alzheimer's Thing going on <laughs> That's one reason Why I worked with him <laughs> Uh, oh, I wish I was that. I wish I had any of that. I'm just boring. <laughs> so thanks guys for coming. Um, I do late night little things like this because I'm up late. So you can always check me out and see if I'm on. Um, if you subscribe and hit the bell, then you'll be notified if I go on because I don't schedule these. I just go on and Cody, I hope you're able to get some sleep because I know it's hard for you, honey. And, uh, I hope you're not in too much pain tonight. I'm glad to meet you too. I hope you're able to get some sleep tonight too. Thanks guys.